Hello and welcome to my first Kerbal Space Program video. For those of you who don't know, Kerbal Space Program is an amazing piece of software that allows you to build your own space program and fly about in space. But for the first hour or so you end up just crashing while taking off, so it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Now I'm going to share with you a... Uh, well it's not a bug, it's more of a unrealistic physics thing. So, first the backstory. This craft over here is my Duna lander. It's got a Asparagus 7 engine first stage and then a nuclear engine. Some wings just for the landing legs to extend down. S separate is um, separator and capsule docking port and some parachutes. Now I like this main stage so I built another interplanetary fuel stage just like this with tons of fuel the same nuclear engine and the same capsule because you can't change the capsule in an already saved craft so I just open up the previous one and change the last stage. So the reason I built that large fuel stage was that I was going to Val, one of the moons of Jul, and I need a lot of fuel for that. And getting back, while getting back I ended up with this. So here you see my two crafts docked together and the problem now is that this stage has landing legs, parachutes, everything and three astronauts and this stage only has fuel, RCS and the capsule so this was never meant for re-entry and I didn't realize until I had already launched that I have three astronauts on board there as well so I can only recover these three in the, in the landing craft so I didn't really want to sacrifice the other three so I decided to try and land them in the atmosphere anyway I mean they were pretty much doomed anyway so I might as well give it a shot and actually it worked it's not it doesn't work every time you need to really pay attention to the to minor details but it works if you're completely drained of fuel and RCS and if you land not on water but on flat ground near sea level then it you can actually land on ground on Kerbin without parachutes or any kind of propulsion anything so I'll show how I did this first I drained almost all of the fuel I only need about 20 tons of liquid something like that looks good. Then I separate the two stages like that and close the hatch. There we go. Now this stage is ready for re-entry. This one can re-enter and I'm not gonna do that, Just that just takes time. So fire up the main engine until the periaps is at around 30 or 40 and then for the fine tuning I use RCS right there we go I am now on a arrow braking trajectory as you can see here very close to the surface so time warp
and I'll use this just to arrow break to get a circular orbit with a very low both apoapsis <coughs> and periapse that means I'll have as low speed as possible when doing the actual re-entry and landing now I did have a lot of luck when I did it the first time and it's probably not gonna work when I'm showing you this time so I'll do a few takes and when I succeed I'll post that one right so now I'm inside the atmosphere and important don't forget to retract your solar panels because they will get ripped off there we go now I'm a bit lazy so I'll use physical time warp and you can see how the trajectory changes as I move through the atmosphere so now I have a captured orbit around Kerbin and the highest point, the apoapse, is getting closer and closer to the surface this might actually be a bit too close we'll see, worst case I have to re-enter on this orbit now I think I'm good yeah this looks great actually I'll do a quick burn to lower this even further alright burnout I have no more liquid fuel left as you can see here now I do have a bit of RCS fuel left so I'll try and deplete that point retrograde and do a small burn now you can see that apoapse is decreasing as well as the periapse and more importantly the periapse is shifting to the right and this won't actually be where I impact because Kerbin will have rotated a bit when I get back so I'll try to move that over to that peninsula just to the right of it and put on physical time acceleration to make it work a bit faster yeah that might work so technically I'm still in orbit but the periapse is far below the top of the atmosphere so I'll re-enter and touch down or crash down depending on how it goes so I will warp to the other side of Kerbin there we go and now I will just finish off the last bit of RCS fuel and now you see when I've completed one orbit Kerbin have rotated so I'll touch down in the middle of that desert I would imagine RCS is out so I'll switch to this camera mode and we'll see how I do the surface autopilot is great for this because you can see the ground speed and the vertical speed well the vertical and the horizontal speed and horizontal speed will drop down to zero before I touch down the vertical speed should get down as low as well below 120 and then it just might work so we'll see and the reason this works is that as each stage crashes into the ground they 
explode and propel the upper portions of the rocket, slowing them down just a little bit. And that's why all the tanks have to be empty, because if they're not, they'll cause a huge explosion, causing everything to... well, causing my Kerbonauts to die. So every segment will slow down the upper segments, and as the last tank, the RCS tank, crashes into the ground, then my Kerbonauts will have slowed down for a well, not a soft landing exactly, but more of a survivable crash landing, I would call it. And this is not exactly realistic, but according to the physics rules of the Kerbin system, they actually survive it. Or they might, if you're lucky, anyway. So now my vertical speed is around 170 meters per second. I am 4 kilometers up. This might actually work, we'll see, down to 150. I am a bit above sea level, so I might not slow down enough. It's very important that you're as close to sea level as possible. The ground is as close to sea level as possible. Down to 130. 120 meters per second soon. I don't think they're gonna make it. Oh, they did! Right, every piece of the ship exploded except for the capsule. So there you go. Even the docking port on the top of the capsule died or exploded. But the capsule survived and my three carbonauts are happy as ever. So that's how you survive re-entry in Kerbal Space Program without a parachute or any kind of retro thrusters. Thanks for watching. Finally, here you can see my three brave Kerbonauts posing for their magazine cover photograph or whatever will be made in their honor. Um, and just for the sake of honesty, I'm gonna show you one attempt that didn't work out because this is, uh, it might be a bit of a glitch and not only poorly set physics parameters. So I'll show you a uh, somewhat fail attempt as well. Four kilometers in altitude and I'm down to 150-ish vertical speed. I just hope this decreases enough before impact. 140. 130. 120. This might not work, probably won't, we'll see. No, that did not work. So, I'll do another attempt.